name is Benji, and today I'm gonna do a tour of my plant pots and ceramics. I'm gonna tell you guys where I got the pots and how much I paid for them, just because I think it's kind of nice to get a gauge for how much pots can cost. The larger the pot gets, typically the more expensive it gets, and also if it's made by a ceramicist, it's likely gonna be pretty expensive because they're handmade and stuff. And I personally treat those like pieces of art, so I don't mind paying more to support artists. In the future, I'm going to do a video talking about my thought process on how I choose the right pot for my plants in terms of like aesthetics and functionality. I think that plant pots are really crucial for integrating your plants into your home just to make it look nice. I purchase a lot of my pots locally, so you might not be able to get some of these where you live, but there's probably nurseries around you that have similar looking pots. I'll include the links to all the pots that have links in the description. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions throughout the video um, in the comments. For my houseplant tour, I started in the like living room area. So for this tour, I want to start in the bedroom. Let's go. This is kind of where I keep all of my nicest pots because it's my bedroom. So I want it to like look really good. We'll get started on this side and then make our way across. So up here I have these two um, sundew. These are new actually, and I have them in Hasami porcelain. They're not plant pots, they're cups, so they have no drainage holes, but that makes them work pretty well for carnivorous plants. You'll notice I have a lot of Hasami porcelain pots. They're just like one of my favorite ceramic brands, I guess you would say. They have these really beautiful, like neutral colors. The other thing that I really like is that they have a nice texture. I actually sometimes purchase the cups and then I drill holes on the bottom to make them into plant pots, but this works out well for sundew. I buy the cups because they're cheaper and I think they're around like 18 to $20. I always purchase my Hasami porcelain stuff through this website that always has 20% off. Not sponsored, um, but I'll put the link for you guys in the description. Okay, and then up here, this is a Kinto pot um, from the brand Kinto. And it's kind of like Asami porcelain in terms of their colors and the style. However, it is a little bit cheaper. I would actually say quite a bit cheaper. This one is a glazed one, so it doesn't have that texture, but it does have that color. So something else that I do is I put these little felt stoppers on the bottom of all my saucers or pots, um, just because it makes placing them on my furniture a lot smoother. Like it just goes on so softly. This is a just a basic terracotta pot. I've had it for a year now, I think. And terracotta pots are one of my favorite pots because they're really cheap. Um, they work well with a lot of our typical house plants. They also gain this patina over time with minerals and um, just age. And I think it looks really beautiful when they do that. I have one pot that looks like that, um, but this one looks pretty pristine actually. Terracotta pots are pretty cheap. I got this one from Home Depot or Lowe's, I think, probably for around like $4 or so, maybe less. Big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot are really good places to get pots, especially terracotta pots. So this is a green glazed pot. Um, you'll notice I kind of go towards like more neutral colors in my pots just because typically I don't want to detract from the plant too much and if you were to use like a purple or a pink or hmm, what's another unnatural color or like bright red or something it'll put a lot of the emphasis on the pot which is generally not what I want to do um, so normally I want the focus to be on the plant and neutral colors like green, whites, browns, tans, uh, terracotta those colors I think look best with plants. I got this for around 15 bucks, I think, from a local nursery. There are these two nurseries in Los Angeles that I love for their pot selection. There's Yamaguchi Nursery and Hashimoto Nursery. I get a lot of my cool pots from them. This is a plant I didn't show in my houseplant tour because I just recently got it from my friend. And so this variegated bilatai is in a Hasami porcelain cup. It's not a pot. Um, so you can see down here, I drilled the hole on the bottom to convert it into a plant pot with a drainage hole. 
For these duplicates, I'm not gonna talk too much about them since I already talked about them. And then down here, I have this pretty sad looking um, alocasia fry deck. <laughs> I repot it and it's kind of been angry with me ever since. I accidentally ripped off a lot of the root mass, but this is a very cool pot. Um, it is from the brand Veridi Co, I believe. I'll link their Instagram down below and they make these really cute uh, shaped pots. It's also small business, woman owned. Um, but yeah, the color is super nice and I love how it looks with the saucer underneath, which it comes with. This is, oh, this is a dirty pot, but um, it's an arena wear stacking planter. Chris got this for me for either my birthday or some holiday or something. It's really cool. It's honestly not like the best pot because it is incredibly shallow, but it looks pretty cool. The only thing is, is that it's pretty expensive for what it is, I think. I think it's like around $60. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this pot because it's not super practical, but it does look pretty interesting. Okay, so this is my Flanodrin UPI in a Hasami porcelain pot in black. And then this is my Philodendron Domesticum, also in a Hasami porcelain pot. I really wish Hasami porcelain would like sponsor me or something because I love their pots so much. Um, but they're just kind of expensive. Over here is my Monstera Sierrana. It is in like a reddish dark brown pot. Not too much to say about this. It's just pretty basic. It looks nice. It's a good size. And I got this from uh, Yamaguchi Nursery here in LA. I have seen a lot of this kind of pot either at houseplant shops or other nurseries when I was in a different city in college. These don't seem too uncommon. Um, but I really do like this color. This is my Anthurium Red Crystallinum. This wasn't my first choice for the pot it's in, but it's kind of grown on me. It's hard to see from the front, so I'll just show you from the back. It's kind of like this square-shaped textured pot. Brown textured. I don't even know what this is made of. I also got this at my local nursery. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. And this is my Anthurium Clarinervium in this kind of strange bowl pedestal pot thing. And it doesn't have drainage holes, so I think it's supposed to be used as like more of a vase. But so what I do when I want to put my plants in pots without drainage holes is that I will just put dried sphagnum moss. With dried sphagnum moss, you can tell when you need to water because the moss will wick its way up to the top. So it'll kind of stay moist throughout and it won't like be a big pool of water at the bottom like you would get with the soil. I believe that this pot was from Urban Outfitters. Uh, yeah, kind of a strange place to get pots, but looks pretty cool. And this plant is pretty funny in this pot. This is a tiny cup from Hasami Porcelain. Also has these stoppers underneath. And yeah, it's actually been in this thing for like, I think around a year, maybe or close to a year and it's just in sphagnum moss with no drainage hole. You can actually see it's growing pretty well, like it's getting thicker and thicker up top. I think I should repot it soon, but I don't know. It's kind of cool. Big plant and tiny pot. And down here, these aren't necessarily pots, but I do get asked about these glasses uh, for my terrariums a lot. So this one and this one are from the brand ADA. And they have a line called Dua, which is for their terrarium type stuff. Um, this one I actually got from my friend who lives in the UK. Um, his Instagram is Worcester Terrariums and he also has a YouTube channel. I can't find these in the US, so he sent one to me. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. It's just like a glass ball with a hole at the top for um, ventilation. Now it's just like a moss ball. This cloche was from a store called Moscatel in Los Angeles, but Ikea does sell a lot of things like this. They sell a lot of cloches. And then these two were also from local nurseries, so I can't link them, but I'll try and find similar things and link them below if I'm able to. And then this pot is from my local nursery as well. Sorry guys. They sell a lot of these like cool looking handmade pots from clay. I believe it's clay. Actually, I have no idea what this material is. It is pretty terracotta-y and I love how it has a lot of these like imperfections and roughness to them, but I think it just looks really good with plants because nature isn't perfect and it is very cohesive with the look of like natural plant stuff so yeah <laughs> over here in the corner next to the bed this is 
my avocado plant. Um, it's actually just in this like terracotta pot. Also, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about how I like when they look aged. And I know a lot of people will wanna like wash this mineral deposit off, but I think it looks really cool. And I always think that aged things always look a little bit nicer. They just have more character and they hold more value because I feel like time is a very valuable thing. And this is something you can only achieve with time. I got this from, this is some big box store, I can't remember. The black on the outside started to flake off, which was not intentional, but I think it looks really cool. This is a very nice pairing of pots. Uh, sometimes I do like to put two pots in one another just because it gives for an interesting look. This pot is very cool because it looks kind of like a gourd. I got this from a local ceramicist in Los Angeles. Her handle is Meepas Plants and Pots, I think. It's really beautiful. You know, once again, has those colors that I like and has a very interesting shape. Um, her ceramics are just like so stunning. And I also just love that I'm like supporting an artist because these are definitely art. Like, look at this. This definitely takes a lot of skill and work. I also feel like pots are just like good purchases because they don't really break. I mean, they, they can break, but like only if you drop them, but you can pretty much just have them forever. And I think that handmade ceramics are really cool because it's literally made by hand by the artist. This isn't necessarily like a ceramic, but it is a pot. It is an orchid basket, also called Vanda Pots, and I just have this Ethereum hanging from here. I just put sphagnum moss in here, and uh, I just water it every once in a while. I just dunk it in my pond on my balcony, and I just let it soak up water, and I love how the shape of the wood panels look. It just looks good. I don't know. <laughs> I need a really large pot for this plant, and it is a concrete pod, so it's pretty heavy. I got this from Mickey Hargitay's in LA. I think that the shape is really nice uh, in combination with this philodendron glorious. That is all of the plants in the bedroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, stop. So now let's go. Okay, so now we're going back out into the living room area. Ooh, also. Look at this light. This area looks really nice with the direct light from the south facing window. Over here, this is a UFO pot. You're supposed to plant plants from the bottom and yeah, it's just a very creative way to display plants and I really like the idea behind this. This is a Kinto pot. Um, I believe it's five inches. It's cheaper than Hisami porcelain and it kind of has that similar vibe except they don't have this one in that nice like tan natural color. I just have my silver sword growing in this and I do like the clean lines of this pot and I love how the saucer just fits perfectly. That is just so pleasing. <laughs> yeah, also Kinto, I reached out to you guys but you don't respond so if you want a sponsorship, let me know, <laughs> please. <laughs> so this pot I got from my friends over at the Atrium LA. They actually gifted this to me, which is like super sweet. It's just like a terracotta pot that's a sort of ashy orange color. Um, I just recently watered it, so that's why it looks a little bit darker, but uh, I don't even know how much it cost since they gave it to me. This is my one of my Monster Deliciosas, and it's just in a terracotta pot. I really love these pots just because like you can see the natural uh, mineral deposits like accumulating on it and this is just my preference I know some people might not like it, but I just think it looks really beautiful uh, Terracotta pots some of my favorite just because they're cheap and they look good There's one creator feline jungle who pretty much only uses terracotta I think and she has a really beautiful space So if you want to just go the terracotta route then you can do that too and it'll look really beautiful the only thing is is that terracotta does dry out pretty fast. So if you're someone who doesn't like to water too often, um, I would recommend not really going for terracotta, at least not too many terracotta pots. My philodendron lemon lime is actually just in its original plastic nursery pot. Um, I do not have the courage to repot this thing. I love how the plant completely covers the pot, so you can't even see the pot at all. All of these pots here are from Yamaguchi Nursery. 
Um, let's start with this one. I think this one's pretty cool. Uh, it's an interesting shape. It's something I typically wouldn't go for, but I kind of like that it reminded me of something from space, like a meteor or something. Can you guys see the texture? It looks pretty nice. And then this one is very similar to the one that my Monstera Sierrana is in. It's the same kind of pot, it's just a larger size. And then my large Monstera is in this, I don't even know what kind of color this is. It's kind of jadey, bluish, green, emeraldy, and yeah. Very pretty. But yeah, I think this pot cost around $60. Yeah, the larger you go, the more expensive. But I mean, Kind of makes sense, I guess, right? <laughs> it took me a while to actually buy that pot for my Monstera because I was holding off on that purchase and then I was just tired of looking at it in its nursery pot and I thought it deserved better. So this is my uh, yellow variegated Adansonii um, Yamaguchi and you'll see how like they have a lot of variety in terms of their shapes and their colors and you can see like the imperfections and the roughness to it. I feel like I could like file my nails on this if I wanted to. <laughs> this is another pot from Yamaguchi Nursery. This one also looks kind of space-like. And I needed a giant heavy pot for this very large plant. Um, it actually tipped over once. Yeah, this is definitely a necessity. But because it's so big, I put it in some random plants I didn't have room for and hopefully eventually they'll climb up the tree and yeah, just live their life. And then over here, this is a Hasami porcelain pot in blue. I really like this pot, very pretty color and I paired it with the natural colored saucer and I think it works really well for this fern. This is something that I thrifted. It's just like a shallow glass dish and I put an asparagus fern in it and made like a little arrangement. So something that you can also do is thrift a lot of your plants or like terrarium glasses and stuff. There's a lot of interesting things that people donate. Oh, my stomach's crumbling. Yeah, especially the glasses, you can find a lot of interesting stuff that can be used for terrariums. This plant was previously in a very tiny pot and it desperately needed a larger pot and a repot. So I got this pot for it. It's the same material as the red crystallinums pot and I needed something tall because this plant's leaves were very large and sprawled out so when it was in its other pot the leaves would actually touch the floor which is how this plant got all this damage. People would like step on it. But yeah so that's why I got this kind of deep uh, tall pot. So this is my philodendron firebird. This is probably the most intricate pot I have. It has this nice color to it. And then it has these random like blue paint strokes or like glaze strokes on it. It's so pretty. <laughs> I also got this from my local nursery. I think that blues really look good with neutrals and tan. I think that this blue and this pot complement this plant well because of the colors like the reds and the greens look really nice together. And this is my Philodendron Gloriosum in another Viridi pot. It's larger and it's in a uh, kind of off-white eggshell color. In my houseplant tour, I picked this up, but I'm not gonna pick this up again. And they come in these large sizes, and what's nice about this pot is that I believe it's made of bamboo. So the pot itself is actually pretty light. The previous plants I showed you in those larger like clay or ceramic pots, they are extremely heavy and I can't move them very easily. So this is kind of nice because the pot doesn't weigh too much um, itself. So this pink princess is actually just in a nursery pot. And I just haven't repotted it yet because I haven't found the right pot. So here is just another Hasami porcelain pot. So for these staghorns, I do get a few questions asking about the wood planks or how I mount them. And unfortunately, I did not mount these myself. When I do mount them, I use cork bark. So I don't actually know where the seller sourced these planks, but I will ask them and hopefully I'll have an answer by the time I edit this video. Ignore the plant because it's kind of struggling, but I got this pot from the person who actually sold me these uh, staghorn ferns and comes with this cute saucer that matches it. And yeah, I just love this pot. It reminds me of those Asian grocery store dishware sets, like the spoons and the chopsticks and the bowls. If you're Asian, I bet you know what I'm talking about. 
And I got this for only $10, which is really cool. Okay, so this is from Yamaguchi. Kind of same deal going on, natural, textured. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is just a regular terracotta pot that is super old. I think this is like one of my oldest terracotta pots. So you can see that natural patina and that age. It's probably around three years old. This is just a plastic nursery pot, but this is from the same ceramicist who made that UFO pot, uh, Nipa's Pots and Plants. And it comes with this pedestal for the pot that is just super pretty. This is just like the perfect texture. It's rough and it has a nice shape, but it has like intricate details with these grooves and indents. And it looks perfect. And I can't believe someone made this with their hands. Like this is a craftsman right there. It's an artisan. <laughs> it's an artisan. <laughs> So this is another Vanda pot that my Anthurium Vici is in. So I just pot it with sphagnum moss and I think that these look really cool. Once again, like the structure of the wood planks. I was actually inspired to use these by, I forget his Instagram handle. It's like Tom J or something. He put one of his queen Anthuriums in something like this and he created the most like interesting looking display. Really like these and they are pretty cheap too. My Hoya Linearis is just in a black plastic pot. Not much to say. I have been looking for a pot for it. I can't decide if I want it to hang or just have it be on a shelf so I haven't bit the bullet and bought the pot yet. Got two plastic pots. This asparagus fern is in an Ikea pot. <laughs> I put it up there because this plant is like so giant. I don't know what to do with it. It's in this really cute Ikea pot. Ikea is a great place to get like cute pots. Um, they create new ones pretty frequently. This one is cute. And I really like that Ikea has cheap pots. I really recommend checking out Ikea selection if uh, you want something cute and relatively inexpensive. So my philodendron micans is just in a terracotta pot. I think I got this from Home Depot. Not much to say about that. This fiddly fig is in a black nursery pot. I want to get a new pot for it, but like I said, large pots are pretty expensive, so I haven't bit the bullet on that yet, but perhaps this week. Here are just some more terracotta pots. Natural patina, very cool. Okay, this is pretty dirty. I need to clean this off, but I got this one from either Lowe's or Home Depot and I really like the shape. I don't really see this very often in terracotta pots. Typically, they will have this lip on them. So this was kind of interesting to see. It offers like a pretty clean lines to it. And this I think was only a few dollars, maybe two or three dollars. This pot is from Yamaguchi Nursery, um, natural rough. You guys know the drill by now, I think. I have a lot of pots that look like this. I wish I could recommend where to get something like that, but I don't really know besides a local nursery. These are not plant pots, but they are ceramics from Hasami Porcelain. This was my first ever Hasami Porcelain thing I ever purchased. You wouldn't think that you would like the roughness of it when you're drinking coffee and stuff, but it's actually pretty interesting. I think it's nice, but I know some people think it's kind of weird. And this is a teapot from them. And then this bottle, I won it on eBay with a bid. I always wanted this bottle, but I can never justify buying it because um, I don't really know what I would do with it besides maybe put flowers in it. But someone was selling it on eBay for 20 bucks. Um, so I had to buy it because typically they're around like $60. So I think it's a steal. These are pretty old flowers, but this vase is from Ikea. And I think it was only like $2. It's very cute. I love this kind of color. Okay, over here. This is another Hasami porcelain cup, not a pot, no drainage hole. And I put a uh, sphagnum moss in here. So yeah, it's just growing without a drainage hole in sphagnum moss. This is a pot from Ikea and I really like these pots. These are extremely cheap and they are also versatile. So you can either put a nursery pot in here or you could actually easily drill holes on the bottom. This material is super easy to drill into. It's kind of like PVC pipe, I think. Um, I'm gonna get more of these for some future plants because they are extremely cheap and they come in a lot of different sizes. This is just a 
tiny terracotta pot. This tiny pot I thought was really cute. I bought it from a uh, Yamaguchi nursery and yeah, it's very small, so it's not super practical, but I have this tiny little succulent in here. This pot is from my friend Ian. Um, his Instagram is IGXplants. He makes ceramics, and he made this. I still haven't found the correct plant to put in here, but it's very beautiful. I got this from one of my local nurseries back when I was in college in Santa Cruz, and they call this a honey pot, and it just looks really cute. I think it matches very nicely with the Palea peperomioides. And now we're going to the bathroom. There's a couple plants in here. This one is really cool. Let me actually take it. Let's go outside. So this pot is super cute. It's like the perfect size and it has some really beautiful detailing and colors and paintings. This texture with the crack, it's not actual texture, but like visual texture. This is a handmade ceramic from a ceramicist. I don't know who the artist is, um, but I bought it from the person who sold me the stack on ferns and it was only 20 bucks I don't know this pot is just like I'm so happy I got this because it's so cool And this pot is also from Mipa's plants and pots She kind of has a style going which you can see this is like the same shape as a gourd pot But it has the pedestal and this uh, detailing with the grooves This is a white kinto pot. You guys have already seen this pot before and uh, so this isn't really a pot, but it is cork bark. I mounted this anthurium on here with sphagnum moss and then cork bark. So let's start with this. This is a concrete bench uh, that's supposed to be used for plants, but I turned it into a pond. I actually got this from Amazon. If you search like concrete bench planter, I'm sure you can find uh, something similar. I don't believe it's actually concrete. I think it just like supposed to look like concrete, but it's made of something else. This is a pot from Ikea. I think it was only like $10 or so, but very pretty. Uh, I love the colors and it comes with this rope twine stuff. This one's kind of interesting. <laughs> this plant is going dormant, which is why all of its leaves are yellow. But uh, yeah, this pot is cool. It's like a chalice almost. It is from Hashimoto Nursery. Quick shout out to Ikea, again. They make these concrete saucers that are pretty cheap, and I use them for a lot of my pots because they don't come with saucers, but they match really well with the concrete. I recently got this plant, so it wasn't in the houseplant tour, um, but this is a concrete planter from Ikea, a very good price. So this pot is also from Ikea, concrete pot. I think this large size is around $10. This pot is from Hashimoto nursery. It's a nice glazed pot with blue and like a yellow orangish. It's very pretty. This is like a deep red pot from the local nursery and I think it matches well with this Euphorbia lactea. This plant lacks color so you know I kind of add in some color. Also there is some bird poop on this pot. <laughs> this I got from an Asian grocery store. I'm using it as a tiny pond. This is also from Yamaguchi Nursery. It's kind of cute. It has like these little tiny handles on it. This wide bowl thing is also from Yamaguchi Nursery. This one is also from Yamaguchi Nursery. <laughs> and this is another one of my terracotta honey planters. I'm using it for my pink princess. There's one thing that I want to show you guys. It's not really a pot, but it kind of is. It's like an aquarium type thing. I think that you guys would think it's pretty interesting though. This is called a Dua Terra Base. It's made by the brand ADA from their line Dua. And it's like a cup that holds water and then it slowly seeps out because terracotta is porous. Yeah, right now I have live mosses growing on it and some aquarium plants and some orchids. This thing is super cool. I just haven't shown it to you guys much. So yeah, those are all of my pots. And in a future video, maybe not the next one, but soon I'm gonna take you guys through like my thought process for how I choose pots, both for functionality reasons and aesthetics. Okay, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions on the pots, feel free to ask them in the comments. Thanks for watching and goodbye.